Watch it. Hello. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Kia ora. Kia ora. Hi, Mike. Yes, it. Watch this. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Still one hot elder. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. This is what a mature woman means. <laughs> That's what I always carry it around in my bag because she hit all the brushes. Well, thank you for coming. Searching for your song, melody inside. Find a word is strong. Nagamo win. Nagamo dang get to see gay win. Hey, hey. Get to see gang get to see gay win. Hey, hey. Speaking of hormones, um, when my son was 16, I was looking closely at his, uh, his coming in mustache. I said, I said, wow. I'm, he goes, what are you doing, mom? I said, I'm admiring your mustache that's coming in. He goes, I'm admiring yours too. <laughs> And so I used to run uh, three, five, and ten kilometers a day to deal with my sexual urges, to calm them so that I wouldn't, if it was a bad day, that was ten kilometers. Because <laughs> it took that long to get rid of the urges to be the point where I was so exhausted I couldn't think about it. And most of my life was like that. So what happened to men menopause for me is I can't seem to get back into that energy anymore to run. What energy? The run. Yeah, I know. Oh, what like energy? Sexual exactly. energy? Yeah, any, any energy. <laughs> any a sexual energy, yes, but also just to, um, to run. I've been going through perimenopause for the last maybe, I don't even know, it feels like a long time. The night sweats have been really awful and the brain fog and then just kind of the moodiness and there's some sort of like depression. I had a multitude of questions. Why is menopause so taboo? Why is no one talking about this? Why don't we matter? Why are we pushed off to the side? Why is aging so difficult for women and not for men? Why do we have to lie about our age? Why can't we just still be sexy? <laughs> Why can't we, you know, like still be beautiful? Whenever there's a gap in my life or I feel like there's a void, the best thing to do is just bring your sisters together, right? So I started reaching out to women that I really care about, women that have gone through menopause or who are going through it or are post-menopause. So, so, you know, this would be a really amazing opportunity to share our stories, to share truth. Kaya Meta, to share a truth. What is menopause? Me, it's freedom and empowerment. You know, your hormones aren't raging around telling you what to do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're like kind of back in control of sound judgment. I never thought about menopause as I was growing up. Uh, because my mother never made a deal out of it. I didn't know she was going through it at all. She was a different kind of woman than the woman that it seems to be today. She never complained about things. My mother never really said anything about it, or my grandmother for that matter, but, but yeah, the idea of it being freedom, like that there's a sense of freedom and that, you know, the hormones aren't raging and stuff. Yeah, I get that. I also get the fact that living in an urban center such as Vancouver, there isn't places to talk about this, you know? Well, I have a different experience. In the Yukon, we have a wonderful thing called Auntie's Camp. This younger woman came and she had all these traditional teas and she was saying, okay, so this tea is really good for hot flashes. And this elder put up her hand and she said, I just want to know, what's that hot flash? <laughs> we live in tent and 40 below, there's no hot flash. <laughs> this notion of hot flashes, I thought, maybe it's because we moved into houses. We started getting hot flashes. In the Yukon, we have infestation of hippies everywhere. Oh, they'd all come talk to me and they'd talk about, oh, when you 
the end of your period, oh, you're going to grieve, it's going to be a terrible loss, and it's going to be so sad, and, and I said, are you kidding me? I said, I'm going to be so happy, I'm going to be dancing on the street, like, you guys go ahead and mourn the loss of your sacred blood and whatnot, go ahead, that's not my scene, <laughs> I'm going to be throwing tampons everywhere, <laughs> I'm just going to be partying it up. What do you think, Michelle? What, what is menopause to you? What is the... It was just this mysterious thing that happened that nobody ever talked about that I ended up having to Google and talk to other women that were older than me. When I was going through the various degrees of menopause, the doctor told me that I should talk to my mom and ask her what her experience was because I was quite young for it. And so I went to my mom and I was like, what was it like for you when you went through menopause? And she didn't remember because she was drinking heavy during that time of her life. And she drank right through it, did not even realize it had happened to her. Wow. Mm -hmm. So where did that leave you? With zero answers. Because my mom is a residential school survivor, um, her first language is Cree, we've never really talked about sexuality, we never really spoke about bodies and changes and periods and all these things. We never had these discussions. 42 years ago today, I started my very first period. But I remember I was by myself at school and went home from school and I didn't know what to do because my mom wasn't able to share um, what to do and so I was just on my own trying to figure it out and and it was um, it was a sad feeling. When I was a kid without any knowledge whatsoever just hearing my friends talk about periods and stuff and I think I read are you there God it's me Margaret which was my only resource as a child. I asked my mom and then she got kind of upset with me and she didn't talk to me about it. I didn't know what was going to happen she said, oh, the old lady's going to come and visit you. And I'm thinking, there's an old lady? Like, an old lady's actually going to come and visit me? And I got, like, really freaked out. We have to separate out what is caused from trauma and what is caused from the menopause. As a, a survivor of abuse, I think it is hard to figure out what is going on in my body. I actually do a little bit about it in my comedy routine now. So I start out by saying, okay, you know, there's the climate change deniers. I'm a menopause denier. <laughs> like, I'm like, a hot flash? No, 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 I'm not having a hot flash. I don't know, night sweat, you know, my sheets are soaked. No, 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 there's nothing going on here. <laughs> so, so I'm the menopause denier. Underneath the laughter is that there's something going on in my body but I'm denying it because that's what I've been taught as somebody who's been traumatized and somebody whose cells have gone through residential school. Why? I was feeling frustrated because I had no one to talk to. Like my mom had gone through a hysterectomy, like a lot of Indigenous women, like they just basically take everything out if they go to the doctors and they have an issue. And that impacts the change. I went to the walk-in clinic and I was just like, can someone help me? Like I actually need support. Like I don't know what is going on with my body. I can't really talk to my mom. My grandmother passed away. I need support. The doctor actually um, prescribed really hardcore antidepressants. And the side effects are loss of hair. The side effects were like weight gain. The side effects were if you choose to go off this medication, you will go through withdrawals, hardcore withdrawals, and you know, all these other things. And I was just super frustrated with that. I didn't end up taking them. So after I had that really horrible experience at the doctor's, I went to a private clinic. I don't have the money for it, I'm a student still and I do jobs here and there, so I saved up. And when I went into the woman's clinic, you have about an hour and a half with a doctor. And the question she started with was, 
Are you a trauma survivor? The biggest thing that impacts how you go through menopause and how it feels is stress. A lot of time when people have had adverse childhood events, sort of stressful, traumatic events, they'll find that those will start to sort of resurface or that, that difficulty with coping with change gets a lot worse as you head into menopause. I still don't understand. What is menopause? Like, what is it? Well, I, I don't think you're alone, you know? <laughs> and, and, I, and I think part of what changes is that every woman goes through it differently. Menopause is basically one year after your last period. But this idea of perimenopause, peri really means around menopause. To any woman out there who's in denial about menopause, it's gonna happen to you no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't nothing you can do to stop it. And as an actress, I'm having the best career in my 50s. In my 40s, it, it's not a good time for, for actresses because you're too old to be the chicky babe. Actress, and you're too young. And you're too young <laughs> yeah. to be the old sage or, or the grandma or the wise one. And then you get in your 50s and providing your face still moves, you've got that. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, mine does. I think it's super important for us, though, to find, create the space to celebrate where we're at right now. Yeah. We have to celebrate as Indigenous women because a lot of us don't make it to that age, right? Like the demographics of, of especially our, our mother's generation, right? It was really crazy if you could make it to 40. I remember thinking when I crossed 50 and life suddenly looked incredibly short. And I thought, I've lived the bulk of my life. Wow. It's like, this is it, girl. I think it helped me to just be comfortable in my own skin and go, this is it, take it or leave it, like it or lump it. For those of us who are still here, past 50 comes a certain mana, mm -hmm. you know, that power, because mm -hmm. we're just in ourselves. Mm -hmm. The greatest lesson that I learned in the life that I, I've had is do it for yourself. Like your sense of identity is for yourself. We always talk about self-care in the afterthought of not paying attention. <laughs> to ourselves, <laughs> but, but I mean, self-care should be something that, that is the first thought. But yeah. as a mother, yeah. you know, when your body begins to grow, you slow down, and then you go into motherhood, and then all of your focus goes on these children, and there is, for me, there was no space really to take care of myself, mm -hmm. because all I wanted to do was make sure they were healthy and fed, and you know, mom, 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 mom. And then they grow up and the selfish little bastards leave. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah, I know. That I you know. just devoted your whole life to them. <laughs> Anyways, that's another show. And they don't answer the phone. Yeah. Yeah. We live in a society where you turn 65 and you're just kind of booted out because you're not contributing to the workforce anymore. But I always say, you know, at 65, that's when our elders are just, they're golden, right? Like they've got so much information. I feel like I didn't really suffer very much and have just moved into this other place of empowerment in my life where I feel stronger and more free and confident. I think aging to non-Indigenous people means weakness and so people do everything to look like they haven't aged and act like they haven't aged. I think women who are getting older are, are more beautiful. Like, um, I'm a married woman, but I get hit on all the time by 20 year olds. And I'm like, how old are you? Like, <laughs> you're younger than my son. Do you need to just like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But um, I think there's a certain amount of confidence that, that I see in uh, women in their older years. Maybe it's that lack of fear lack of fear of getting pregnant, lack of fear of certain things like that. Since I got older, it's younger men. It's mm -hmm. like when I was younger, it was older men that were interested in me. Now it's younger men. <laughs> <laughs> they, they want the cougar experience. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the cougar. What's a, who, who's a cougar here? <laughs> oh, I, think, I think we're all cougars. <laughs> But it is, it's like, I, I've often said to her, Do you, don't you realise I'm old enough to be your mother? So I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't they care, do, I just, don't care. <laughs> they, want, they want the experience. They want, want to learn something. And right. I think, yeah, we have an age where, you know, you've, 
had a full life. That's why she's so quiet, because she's got a young buck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she you got does. a young buck. Yeah, my oh, husband's yeah. younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about bringing sexy back, because I'm in perimenopause, and I'm going through all this fun stuff right now. You get through that, and so now you get your brain back, you do get your brain back and you feel relatively normal again. You just don't have periods. Yeah. That's amazing. And you can get have relationships again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you do go through that period yeah. where it's just not. Nah. No libido. Men on, <laughs> men on pause. Yeah, men are on pause. I mean, I'm going through the stage. I've had hot flashes for the last five years, though. Five years. Hardcore at night. And then no libido, like no interest in anything. Yeah. Just, But I think hopefully that'll be ending soon. And you did get your sexy back. Yeah. <laughs> you said it never left. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ooh, lucky you, eh? Jeez. Why yes, am I not like... surprised? <laughs> <laughs> when Native women come together, we laugh so loud. And I think when we talk about sacredness or ceremony, ceremony is also laughter. I think about the old woman our aunties, our ancestors, our kukums are coming to sit with us with their first period and then they stay with us until our last. So they're sitting with us throughout our whole lives. And then I thought we do all these ceremonies for young girls and we welcome this old lady, this old kukum, this ancestor to be with them, but we never say farewell. We never say miigwech. We never say thank you. So where is that ceremony for us when that ends? As I was packing to come here, I was thinking about these other women that were coming, and I was thinking about everybody, everybody's preparing to come here. And I was like, hey, we're getting ready to do a ceremony, a ritual together. And because I felt left out that I didn't get to have my puberty rights ceremony, I said, I'm going to claim this as my ceremony for menopause. So I felt us coming together, sharing and gifting each other with stories and gifting each other with laughter and gifting us with food, salmon and bannock and meat, was a ritual. Ceremony is the act of coming together. Ceremony is being in a place where we can share our truths. It's in our ways, it's up to you, get to see girl and hey, hey, get to see girl, get to see girl and hey, hey, get to see girl, get to see girl and hey, hey, get to see girl, get to see girl and hey, hey. Nagamo win, Nagamo dan, Nagamo win. Nagamo dan, Nagamo win.